Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today I'm going to show you what to do with leftover diamonds. I hope you'll stay tuned. So, what do you do with all of these that... These just came from some little projects I had along the way, and there's still more stuffed in there. And you think to yourself, am I ever going to use these on another diamond painting? Will I ever be out of diamonds in these rhinestone types? I don't know. But I do know that I've got a plan. My plan evolved when I found these two magnets at Dollar General. And they come in a pack that looks like this, and I ripped the rest of it off from Bright and Bold Assorted Magnets 2. And they, if you're looking for the item number, there's all the info. Hopefully you can see that. I'll leave it there for a second so you can see it. They are There are two patterns. And I thought what I would do is take markers, and I have these new acrylic paint markers that I was thinking I would use first and then go over everything with Aileen's Tack It over and over. Let it dry and then use those on it. So let me get the, out the markers I got. I bought these, I'm pretty sure, at Amazon. And you got 24 of them. They were very inexpensive, but they're opaque, which means you can't see through them. And that's what I was shooting for because I thought it would be really fun to do some projects with markers that you can't see through. So... We're going to try them out on this for the first time. The reason I thought I needed to paint them basically first is because if I don't and you have a diamond that's laying next to its buddy and there's a gap, you're going to see the color in the gap. Or the, excuse me, you're going to see white in the gap. The thing I liked about this marker set is these six at the end are pearlized. I thought that was fun too. And then there are pearlized gold and silver. And that made me all kinds of happy. And I thought what I would do is pick out the colors that I want to use. Now, if you don't have a lot of leftover diamonds, don't just randomly pick your colors. You need to match your colors to your diamonds if you're going to be doing this system that I'm using right now. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. Maybe for my first time I'll do the smaller one because you know how that'll go. If I don't, I'll have a problem. I'm going to use two shades of pink, two shades of purple, and a blue, and then I have to get a green. Okay, here's my plan. Like all markers that are paint in the paint family, you need to start them. And I'll show you how you do that. You get a piece of scrap paper and you hold down on that, push down on the little tip until it starts. See, that one's ready to go now. Doesn't take very long. So I'm only going to use this color purple in these little narrow pieces. I'm going to have to make the narrow piece a little wider though in order to make sure that I can fit a diamond on it, it has to be a little bit wider than that. Not a lot wider, but uh, enough wide, uh, you know, it has to be wide enough that you can get a diamond in there. And it doesn't bother me if I go over because, again, diamonds are going to be on this. And so it's not like there's going to be um, a big issue with, you know, the paint going over into the, going to the next guy's lane, we'll call it. A little bit more on that one. I'm going to cover up my black lines whenever it's possible. I'm not sure how well this paint will sink into these magnets or if at all. So we're kind of testing this out to see if it works and then if it doesn't, you guys will be the first to know. I'm going to start with these two. One is pearlized and one is not. This is the non-pearlized color and that is the pearlized so I'm just going to put those over there and I think what I'm going to do is just put this green I don't know. let me check this one out and see what I think of it I 
I think I'm going to go around the centers with the darker green and around the edges with the pearlized green. I'll go back over that center section. Don't forget, you have to be able to color enough that you can get the, um, that you'll be able to um, have enough room for at least one row of whatever you're going to do. So I'm going to put this color in the center and I'm going to color the stem with that color. Again, trying to make sure we have enough room for one row. Don't worry if, you're, if your paint isn't the greatest because this is all going to be covered or most of it is going to be covered. Now this one is going to be tricky because there's no way that there's enough room for that many of those um, vine things. Uh, what do you call those? Ribs. Yeah, we'll call it ribs of the, of the leaf. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do two rows of diamonds in that and then that way we have enough um, it, it has the essence of a leaf but it isn't um, super close together. I was afraid if I tried to put enough diamonds in there to accommodate five rows of those ribs. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about these things right here. Covering up our black outline. That's probably the most important part is getting rid of that outline because you don't want that to show through under or around under and around your diamonds. I know it's going to look like a hot mess. Don't worry. I promise we'll make this look better in the end or we'll try. Okay, then my purple's almost dry, but not quite. So I think I'm going to do my blue border. I don't know why whenever I do flowers, I choose this blue color for my background just because I think it reminds me of when you're looking at flowers from below how the sky would be showing. So you need to make sure if you're close to a border, we're calling that the white border here, that you have to have enough room for that, for a diamond. One diamond has to fit in this outer border. So it doesn't really matter when you're, um, when you've got a lot of space or enough space to do a row or two rows. But when you're tight, like down in here, you're going to have to go into the flower image. So you need to cover your black up with the blue so that you have enough room for a row of diamonds on these weird close areas like that. Well, as in all things, I completely forgot to turn back on the camera when I started painting purple. So I figured I would just finish it up with you. Remember when you put your color down, you always have to make sure that you have enough room for one row of diamonds. Like right here, I'm going to need to have enough space. So I got to build out my flower a little bit more just to make sure. Don't want to screw that up. And you can't have any square edges. You have to have rounded edges. So, well, I'm working with round diamonds. If you had square diamonds, it would be different, but I'm working with round ones. So I don't want any square edges because of that if I can avoid it. It's better if I have ones that I can work with. Okay, now we're just going to let this dry. Before I go any further, I thought I would show you my storage system. If you haven't seen the video, I'll link that up above here. But I made this particular book with my ostrich that I absolutely love. Uh, I made this book just for the leftover crystal type diamonds, the rhinestone looking diamonds. And I put them in color order. My friend Sherry said this is the best way to store diamonds where you get these baseball card holders and you get them at Walmart or Amazon and you get a bunch for very little money. And uh, you put I put them in color order so I have all my blacks first alphabetically, then browns, then blues, then greens, and so on. Then I'm going to get my tacket over and over and get my scrap piece of paper back. I'll use this one instead. It matches. How pretty. It's all matchy-matchy now. 
Then I'm just going to use a sponge brush, just a little sponge brush. I'm going to put a gob. Well, that was, uh, I never used this bottle. It must have had like a little bit that was old in the top and it just uh, squirted out a lot. Just saying. A lot, probably more than I need, but we're going to go with, I'll just uh, use this much and be glad I have it, right? In the end, I might not have any extra. You never know. It's looking good. And if it hasn't dried and you get some on the back of the piece, like on the back of the magnet, you can always wipe it off with a wet, damp towel. Not wet, damp. Now all we need to do is let this layer dry. And once this is dry, we can go ahead and start putting our diamonds on it. Our project will be almost done. I have my little boat and I have my wax. This one is new, so I have to take the top off because it's a little plastic piece that you don't usually need. And I, when I do this, I always fold mine over like that because I get more, more pieces or more, yeah, more thickness of wax, I think, in, into my little tool. So the first thing I want to do, I think I already said this before, I really want to focus on the blue area first. I don't know if I have enough of any one color, so I think I have blue flying all over the place over here. Let me try. I'll do one layer of this all the way around. And then I will go in with another blue and do another layer if I have room for it. I'm going to start right here where I have this area. And I'm going to put them butted up against each other. When I start thinking about it, I thought, oh, maybe I'm not even in frame. Am I? I don't know. I hope I am. It's very, very, very sticky. I'm half rich, fast forward, <clears throat> each color. I started doing the green and then I realized I didn't have the camera on because I figured you didn't want to see me do a thousand uh, pounds of blue. And I um, did the green. There was a bunch of green intermingled with these blue. I don't know how that happened, but sometimes my organizational skills are poor. So they went into the bag with all the blue ones. And I do try to keep them separate. I don't know what I was doing there. Anyway, I ran out of this color green. And I decided I would do the centers of the other side in this color green. Which was the color I originally was going to use. But then when I found this other green in the um, intermingled with my um, blues, I figured I would just use them up. There wasn't that many. But it was enough to do those um, leaves the way I guess I wanted them. I'm trying to make sure with every one of these that I remember that I have to get a, a diamond on either side of it if I put it, you know, if I put it somewhere near the bottom. In fact, I think I'm going to move this little stem so it doesn't start at the very bottom. It's going to start one diamond up from the bottom. That should be enough space for that. Now we're just going to finish with the darker purple. I think we should have enough now.
Okay, we're down to the very last part of it. So there you have it. It is how to use your diamonds up and I did a good job. I used a little baggie of each one of mine and that made me happy because uh, you know when you just accumulate and accumulate these it starts to become overwhelming and you don't know what you're going to do with them all and in my case um, I really like making the little um, the the projects that are with these rhinestone looking diamonds and so I am collecting a lot of those and um, I'm happy that I found this idea and that it worked I hope you enjoyed this that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that and thanks so much for watching bye bye